Hello, and welcome to episode 61 of the Wayward Skein podcast. It would help if I could speak. Uh, my name is Lynn. I'm also known as Toll Baby, and you can find me pretty much anywhere online. I'm on Ravelry, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Etsy, I'm all over the place. Anyway, um, today is Monday, January 6th. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, the last time I spoke to you was during my eight crazy nights of vlogging where I ended the whole thing very sick. <laughs> um, I think I finished it on the 30th instead of the 29th because I was so sick on the 29th that I just didn't get up. Like I just kept going back to sleep. I'd go to the bathroom, have a little bit of soup, go back to sleep, get up, go to the bathroom, have a little soup, go back to sleep. So I think I did my last episode on the 30th. Um, I don't think Rob participated in that one, but he was, he was there for some of the other ones. Um, so yeah, it's been a little bit crazy since then. Uh, I was in Chicago until Friday, January 3rd, and, uh, then I flew home. Um, I hadn't checked on this in a really long time, but as of today, there are 355 members in our Ravelry group. Thank you all for showing up. And, uh, we did, there's not a lot of chatter in the Facebook group. Nobody really says anything, but I post the episode there every week. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure how to encourage chatter. If you guys have any ideas, please let me know. Or if you want to like pop on the, um, the episode thread, uh, say, Hey, um, tell me what you'd like to see in the group. Tell me what would, uh, what would encourage you to, uh, to participate and what you would like to see going on in the group. Um, we also have 311 subscribers on YouTube. If you have not already, click the little red button and subscribe. Um, but anyway, I just did, really wanted to thank all of you that do come back and uh, watch all my insanity every however many weeks. I'd like to say every week, but let's be real. This is me. Um, so anyway, if you haven't subscribed, do that. Uh, if you like this episode, click the little thumbs up. I don't tend to remember to say stuff like that. <laughs> um, tea, I drank my tea earlier. It was, for tea's sake is the company, and the flavor was called uh, Going Green, or Keep It Green, or something like that with Jasmine. Um, it was really good, really, really good. And uh, that brings me into my New Year stuff. I don't generally tend to make resolutions. I know I'm not going to keep them. There's no point. But uh, one thing I did want to do this year was to, and I left that notebook way up there. Don't mind me. I'll just reach without knocking everything over. Ha ha, I did it. What I wanted to do for 2020 was every month I wanted to make a small list, very small list, maybe three items of habits that I want to either acquire, uh, break, or, you know, things I wanted to change on a monthly basis. So for Monday, Monday, wow. For January, <laughs> the month of Monday, nobody needs that. Um, for the month of January, I wanted to start my day with a cup of green tea, as opposed to jumping right into Diet Coke, which is my usual caffeine source. Um, I've been telling myself for a little while now that I need to cut back on the Diet Coke, if not quit completely. Um, but it is my caffeine source. <laughs> so I'm hoping that if I get into the habit of starting the day with a cup of green tea, that will help me taper off the Diet Coke a little bit. So today I did, um, I did yesterday as well. Uh, yesterday I started the day with a cup of uh, David's Gen Maicha, which is a green tea with toasted rice. Uh, today I was the for tea's sake um, jasmine green tea and it was absolutely delicious. Um, tomorrow I think I may try brewing my tea here and bringing it to work with me because my little water bottle here keeps uh, cold drinks cold, but it also keeps hot drinks hot. Um, so I wouldn't be able to drink it on the way to work because I would burn myself horribly, but, um, it will keep the tea hot. I just realized I still had water in there. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, I may try to brew my tea and put it in there tomorrow morning. Um, the other thing I'm trying to do is drink between two and three liters of water per day. Uh, my internist recently asked me to start taking Metamucil, the, um, flavorless sugar-free version, like the, the one that doesn't taste like anything and has no sugar added. Uh, part of the problem 
that I'm having is that when you have a massive intake of fiber, like up your fiber intake, you have to up your water intake as well. And I didn't do that at first. And oh boy, did I notice that that was not a good thing. So um, I have to really up my water intake. So I'm aiming for between two and three liters of water a day. Yesterday, I think I hit two and a half. And today I am just, just at the two mark. So I may put some more water in here and drink it up before I go to bed. But those are the habits that I'm going to try and uh, cultivate for January. Um, my big goal for January is to get back to the gym at work. Um, I had stopped going to the gym at work because I wasn't crazy about the equipment they had there. And I was, I much preferred the equipment at the Fit for Less gym, but the Fit for Less gym is a half hour drive each way. And I work two jobs and I go to school and I don't have time to an hour round trip to the gym plus an 45 minutes to an hour working out. I just don't have time. So... So that's my goal for January, uh, is to do those two things every day and at least get my membership back at the gym at work and start going down there again. Um, I'm not going to give myself, I want to go to the gym this many times a week because it fluctuates. Sometimes I can go every day. Sometimes I can only go once. Uh, you know, I'm not going to put a number on that just yet. Um, my main concern is to go back down there. So that's what I want to do for 2020. I'm not going to set any resolutions. I'm just going to try to do this. I'm going to try and track it in my journal. Um, my friend Sarah, who is the Steeped in Books booktube channel, um, she has a reading tracker that she fills out. And it's just like she colors in the squares every day that she, you know, for however many pages she reads per day. So I kind of want to make myself a sheet in my journal that is, you know, the two habits and whatever else I want to track. Like I want to track if I've taken my medication that day, things like that. And just do a, a, a however many days the month has tracker to keep track of whether or not I was successful or not. Um, so I'm going to try to set that up tomorrow. Uh, I was successful yesterday. I was successful today. I made this decision yesterday. So the first few days of January don't count. <laughs> um, although I did drink two liters of water on the third. I was on planes and I was just like, I was not feeling great when I came home. I worked on Saturday, which was the fourth. I didn't feel great. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably not getting any better because I'm not drinking any water. <laughs> A big part of my problem when I'm sick is that I already feel like I'm drowning. So I don't want to drink a whole lot of water, <laughs> which is bad because that help that stops you from getting better when you're sick. But anyway, so Sunday, I had drank a lot of water on Saturday after I had left work. And Sunday, I felt a lot better. So I'm counting that as proving my theory a little bit empirically, not uh, not empirically, um, anecdotally, not empirically. <laughs> but anyway, uh, those are my goals for January. So now I can go into knitting content. So I added five screws to my blanket. Look at that. It's super pretty. I love the way it's turning out. I think I may stick to this width for a few um, rows and see how it goes. And then if I decide I wanted to make it longer, I can add it on to the end. It's super easy to do that. So this first square is, was a fiber stash sock blank that I got from Mandy, who is Mandy Pinecone Crafts. Uh, I have no idea. It's a dark blue with blackish overtones and flecks of red, white, and yellow. No clue. Oh, whoo. I just almost took the whole notebook with me with my sleeve. I'm going to hold it up closer so that you guys can see the colors a little bit better. If anybody recognizes it, give me a shout. Uh, this red is Fleece Artist Trail Socks in Tonal Reds from my friend Holly. Yes, the Holly. Uh, the fourth one is Night Owl Fibers Basic Sock in Pumpkin Spice Latte from My Color Affection. It's part of my stash. It's from Rachel at Night All Fibers. I love it. I didn't sew in my ends because I went to bed super quickly after I finished this last square. Uh, this last one is Nitpick Stroll Tonal in Blue Violet. Again, that's from Mandy of Mandy Pine Home Crafts. And I think I only have a couple of minis left from her in the current, uh, the, the Rhinebeck minis that she gave me this year. So I loosely based my, pa my scrappy blanket off the 
is it knitted patchwork recipe by Martine Ellis. Uh, so it's loosely based on that. Um, I don't think I cast on the same number of stitches. I, I very loosely based. Um, but yeah, so it's loosely based on that. It's just a basic my dude square blanket. I cast on 40 stitches. So 20 this way, 20 this way. And as I go, the my dude, whatever. And when I pick up stitches, I pick up both sides of the V. If you can see here, because that's a really easy way to um, weave in my ends afterwards. So I do that with my socks too. When I'm picking up the gusset stitches, I always pick up both sides of the V so that it makes a, a, a neater edge. I like it. Anyway, so that's the first thing I worked on this week. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> and most of these were added while I was in Chicago. I think I added these last three here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did the black one and the orange one in Chicago and the other three I did here. So that's my blanket. It lives in my art Diana bag currently. Um, I'm still looking for the other half of my minis. I've got one huge Ziploc bag, like one of those really, really big ones. Um, but I can't find the second one. I know it's in the house somewhere. I will continue looking for it. I have not yet reached my goal of, I did reach my eight squares uh, during um, the, the vlogmaka, Rob called it, um, the eight days that I was vlogging, but I have not reached my goal with this thing. I didn't move my progress keeper either. I've only gotten two, like four rows, so two back and forths done. I was supposed to get eight done. I got two done. So I still have six, 12 rows to go, um, six more pro, um, garter bumps on my, it's not my color affection, it's my find your fade. <laughs> I do that every time. I call it the color affection. I can put this down now because this is, this is my, um, my blanket notebook. But I don't need it on my lap right now. So I only got a couple of rows done on my um, find your fade. I love how it's knitting up, though. I can't wait for it to be done so I can squish it around my shoulders. It is getting very long. I won't go through all the yarns. I will just tell you about the one I'm knitting right now because I tell you every week, and I'm sure you're getting very bored of it. Uh, so the one I'm knitting right now is Open Skies Yarn, which is Jeanette of the Bookish Stitcher podcast. She's the dyer behind that. It is their tweed sock in the Chilly Mornings colorway. It is, sorry, it's over here in this bag. It's a gorgeous, deep blue with nice tweed specks in it. And I love how it's knitting up. It's super soft and it's squishy and I love it. So that is the Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry, who is Ray Andrea Knits Designs. Um, so my this is knit on size US 6 needles, which is a 4 millimeter needle. And I will get section 9 done before I see you guys again next Monday. I only have, I said what, 6 garter bumps, 12 rows to go. I can get that done in a couple of evenings if I, you know, actually look at it and work on it. Um, oh, my goal for my blanket is to do two more squares before next Monday. That should be fairly easy. Could probably do that before I go to bed tonight. Um, the, but that, this is home knitting. I do have, and of course I didn't take it out of my bag, but fortunately my bag is right here. Haha. <laughs> so, uh, I said that I wanted to be done the leg on, um, on Rob's socks by his birthday. I was not done by his birthday, but I was done by the time I was halfway home from Chicago. Uh, by the time I, the first flight ended, I was done leg and was starting heel flap in the airport. Um, and I actually posted a picture on Instagram going, so apparently the first flight from Tor Chicago to Toronto is 27 rows long. And I said, I wonder if the second flight will be a heel flap long. Turns out it I finished the heel flap in the airport. So I actually changed things up a little bit. Don't tell Rob. I changed things up a little bit. And instead of doing a regular slip stitch heel, I did this eye of partridge heel. 
because I did one on the sock I'm designing and I really really like how it turned out with a variegated yarn and look at how pretty that is. Sorry let's stick it in front of my face so it focuses. Rob keeps telling me to stop doing this but it's so much a part of podcasting at this point. <laughs> so I really like how the Eye of Partridge heel looks in this yarn. It's gorgeous. Um, he will not notice. I mean he'll notice to look at it but he won't notice feel wise because they feel pretty much the same. Um, so I've actually, I'm almost all the way through the gus gusset decreases. I think I've got five more decreases to go. And so I fully plan on having this sock done by the next time I record because this is now my bust knitting. And I got six rows done this morning and four rows on the way home. So this is my basic sock. Uh, I follow loosely the um, sock recipe, A Good Plain Sock by uh, Stephanie Pearl McPhee, who is the yarn harlot. I took her Grok the Sock class many years ago. Um, actually, did I write the date? Because this was the notebook she gave us at the workshop. I did not. So, but anyway, it was a good long time ago. It was like 2013 or 2014 that I took this class. And um, so she teaches you how to not have to follow a pattern to knit a sock. Now Rob likes a three by two rib on his leg because he has one ankle that is significantly larger than the other. He broke his ankle many years ago and had surgery and there's pins holding them in place. So um, one of his ankles is a lot bigger around than the other. So he likes the three by two rib because it's snug enough on his smaller leg that it doesn't fall and it expands enough on his wider leg that it doesn't, it's not tight. So he likes how the socks fit with a three by two rib. Sorry, I'm tangled in all my needles here. Get out. Really? Get. Anyway, uh, so yes, I do a three by two rib. On the, in this case, I did an eye partridge heel. I do my, my heel turn I did on the second flight and I just, just picked up the stitches for the gussets and done one row around when we landed in Ottawa. So that's how long the second flight was. Uh, the first flight, I got like this much of the leg done. Then I got this done in the airport, and then I got the heel turn and guess, picked up the, for the gusset uh, on the second flight. The second flight is a little bit shorter. It's only like 45 minutes. So, um, yeah. I don't know why I'm fixated with picking off the cat here. Anyway, uh, and this is also in Nidell Fibers. Um, it's in her basic sock. I think it's the... It's named after an owl, but I don't remember which one. Uh, barn owl sock, maybe? And it's in the Rusty Hook colorway. And I love the striping that it's doing. Isn't that gorgeous? And this is a lot greener than it's showing up on screen. It's like a true teal. Um, it's actually washing it out quite a bit. Because my lights are super, super bright. <laughs> I have LEDs in here, and they're so stupidly bright. It's like daily, like blinding in here. Uh, when my son first changed the light bulbs, I think I was down to one light bulb in the kitchen and I think I was down to one here. And this, this fixture takes three light bulbs and the kitchen takes two. And when he put all the light bulbs in at the same time, I walked into the kitchen and was like, oh my God, because all my kitchen cupboards are white. So it was like really reflective too. <laughs> it was crazy. But anyway, yeah, so this is more teal. Actually, that's pretty close, but it's still washing bits of it out. And I'm using my 2.5 millimeter carbons, which is US one and a half. I love my carbons for socks. They are fabulous. They are my favorite. I adore them. And this lives in my little Hanukkah needle pouch. In, sorry, trying to get my hair out of the, the knitting. In my little Rhinebeck 2017 bag that Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Craft had made for us. Well, she made them and she had them embroidered by uh, somebody else. I can't remember who, but there's her little tag, Hawthorne Cottage Craft. They're gorgeous. I love them. And she had like the colors done, like the, the that's a bluish teal or a teal of tealy blue um, to go with like the each person's favorite color. So I love it. And this is my bus knitting. It comes, I, I pull it out on the bus every morning. <clears throat> so I should easily be able to finish the sock by next Monday. But that's my goal for the sock, is to finish it off. And then maybe we'll have a goal for the following week of getting this one started, because we'll see how much time I have. Um, 
so that's what I've been knitting. Uh, the snowy owl got frogged. It did not, well, it's, it didn't get frogged. I just pulled the needle out of it because I wasn't going to. It looked, I think the way I put it last time was it looks like it was knit by blind ferrets. It looks like it was knit by drunken blind ferrets. <laughs> it's really awful. Um, not one of my finest um, efforts and yikes. Um, apparently I'm not a toy knitter or at least I'm not. A complicated toy knitter. <laughs> I can do monsters, no problem, because they're just big rectangles, or big squares, rather. Uh, I did start a new project. Actually, I started it tonight. Um, this is a test knit for Seattle, Di uh, Seattle Sky Dye Works, uh, who is my friend Cass. Um, it is the alley-oop hat, is what it's called. I'm not going to show you anything more than this, you can't really see anything at this point anyway. Uh, this is one pattern repeat. And uh, you'll be able to see the pattern better when the hat's a little bit bigger. I do not know if I'm supposed to show this to you yet. So this is all you get to see. It's literally just a little tube of yarn. That's all you get. Uh, I am knitting it out of... Uh, I have the band right in front of me. I had the band on my computer and then I moved stuff. Because you may not, may or may not know this, but you're looking straight at me right now instead of me looking down at you. That's because I put a whole bunch of like encyclopedias under my computer to raise it up a little bit. So this is knit out of Sirdar Denim Chunky, which I believe is 100% cotton. No, it is 60% acrylic, 25% cotton, 15% wool. Uh, it is the colorway SH622. <laughs> um, I actually have two skeins of this. Uh, she Basically, it's a bulky hat. You, you have to knit it on larger needles. I'm partway through my first cake. I do have another cake of this. I caked it like years ago when I bought it. Um, I believe this was a Knit Knackers yarn, um, which was a big yarn store that we had in Ottawa that is now gone. Um, so yeah, I do have another cake of this, so if I, we'll see, I, I may make myself a pair of mittens out of this, because I love it, it's very soft, it's very lofty, it's very, even though it's mostly cotton, well, it's mostly acrylic, but it's got some cotton in it instead of wool, um, I'm okay with that, and I think that a pair of mittens in this would be lovely, because I still can't find the mitts I made last, last year, and my hands are getting cold, uh, and they would, they would match this hat. So I may make myself pyramids out of the other skein of this that I have. The other cake of this, I should say, because I did cake both balls up when I bought it. Um, this was back when I owned a ball winder, which I no longer own because I, I don't particularly like knitting from cakes. Although I do have a yarn bowl uh, that this is sitting in and it fits very nicely. So I'm not minding too much knitting from the cake right now because I'm using my yarn bowl. Um, but anyway... Yeah, so this is by Castile Lukes, who um, is the owner and dyer behind Seattle Sky Dye Works. She will be releasing it, I think, early to mid-February. Um, she wants us to have them done by late Jan by the end of January. I will probably have it done before I podcast again because it's really, really quick. I got this done in maybe 45 minutes to an hour, so... Uh, and this is one and a half hour inches, one and a half inches of hat. And she wants you knit it eight inches or so before you start the decreases. So it'll go really quick. Can't be on the uh, the bus, though, because I have to follow the pattern. <laughs> I have not yet memorized the pattern. So um, that's all I've been knitting on. I have no stash. Uh, I did finish watching Vlogmas after I talked to you guys last because uh, some people were still uploading episodes um, after Christmas happened. So uh, all the Vlogmas episodes that I watched this year was Hawthorne Cottage Craft with Kate, By the Lakeside with Sandy, um, which I had never seen before and I really, really enjoyed it. So thank you, Kate, for turning me on to Sandy's podcast. Uh, the Cat Lady podcast with Andrea. Knit Night with Mika Mika with Shamika. Um, Steeped in Books with True Canuck Girl. She was doing Vlogmas on her booktube channel. She was also adding squares to her her um, scrappy blanket. 
and I'm going to pause this right now and go get some water. Much better. Sorry, apparently when I don't talk a lot, I start choking on my own phlegm. <coughs> anyway, the other two um, Vlogmas people that I've been watching were Suburban Stitcher with uh, Diane and um, I ended up adding stitching the high notes with Joe Joe wow <clears throat> Joanna meh because uh, I'm looking at my show notes and this is Opera Joe which is her Ravelry name but it's Joanna um, podcasts that I've seen since I talked to you last uh, the gentle knitter put out episode 30 which I very much enjoyed thank you uh, Nicole for that uh, the cat lady podcast uh, put out episode 103 which I watched it was right in the middle of vlogmas andrea are you insane recording a regular episode in the middle of vlogmas what were you thinking <sighs> you're the only person who did that by the way the only one that i was watching the vlogmas episodes who put regular videos in between except for sarah but sarah's focus is vlogmas and she didn't do a lot of regular videos not as many as she would normally do um in her or her scheduling uh sarah nova crafts put out episode 164 hi jess um, Ninja Chickens did tutorials on harvesting indigo and turning it into a concentrated powder, uh, dyeing with salt and indigo, and uh, making roasted chicory root tea, all of which were fascinating and I really enjoyed them. She also put out episode 68 of her podcast. Um, that's Maria, by the way. I keep forgetting people's names when I don't watch them very often, but I just watched four of her videos, so that's Maria. <laughs> Night Owl Fibers put out episodes 41 and 42 since I talked to you last. Uh, Must Love Yarn put out episodes 150 and 151. I have not yet watched 151. I did watch 150. Um, I will watch 151 probably tomorrow. Uh, the Knit Girls put out episodes 466 and 467. By the Lakeside put out a video on her planners and journals for 2020, uh, which I found fascinating because... I could not imagine trying to keep track of four journals. Um, Stitching the High Notes put out episode 76, which I just finished watching. And uh, Hand Me My Knitting put out episode 31. Hi, Sam. It was lovely to see you again and spend a little bit of time with you. Um, I watched that on my lunch hour earlier. So did I watch it? No, I think I watched it as I was making dinner because I dinner was one of those put everything in a baking dish and stick it in the oven sort of thing. It was potatoes, sweet potatoes and sausages. Put it all in a sheet pan and stuck it in the oven, which reminds me I still have to do the dishes. So those are the podcasts that I've seen since I talked to you last. Um, I'm still slogging through the A-team TV wise. I kind of feel like the series has already jumped the shark um, midway through season two. The character of Amy left and she was replaced with Tanya and there's just no chemistry with Tanya. It's, she kind of feels like the scrappy do of the series. The character that was brought in to sort of save the whole thing and no, uh, it's not working. Um, I'll keep watching it. It's still enjoyable, but it's not, uh, she just doesn't have the same chemistry with the other actors that Amy, Amy's character did. Um, so eh, we'll see how it goes. I'm, right at the beginning of season two right now and uh, we'll see reading i actually picked up a book it took me maybe 20 minutes to pick a book off my shelf yesterday which is a little embarrassing so maybe i need to do what booktube um creators do which is create a to be read list a tbr list um because i have a lot of books but I don't know, just from looking at them on the shelves, which ones of my books are parts of series, whether or not I have the whole series, whether or not I've read the book before. I mean, I usually know if I've read the book before, but I, it's hard for me to just look at my bookshelf and go, yep, want to read that. Dumb. So last night took me an embarrassingly long time to pick a book. So I want to, one of my, goal, one of my other goals for January is to create a short TBR list of maybe five, maybe 10 books. Um, so that I can, you know, when I finish the book that I'm currently reading, I can just go to my list and go, yep, this one's next and go pick it off the shelf. So yeah, we'll see if that happens. Um, I'm getting through this one fairly quickly. So 
I will probably have to get on that list if I want to have one because I'm already, I'd say a third of the way through the book and that was one night. <laughs> so I'm currently reading Samantha's Secret Room. It's a YA novel um, by Lynn Cook. It's She's a Canadian author. Uh, it was published in 1963 by Scholastic. I believe this is the 1990s version because it was republished in 91. Yep, this is 1991. So um, it's a Canadian book and it's, it's kind of neat because the book was inscribed. It was given to me in a box of free cycle books. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far. It is based in, good lord, Penetanguishene. I knew it was a, a a native name, a First Nations name, and I knew it was in Ontario, so it couldn't be Timiskaming, uh, which is in Quebec. Penetanguishene, which is not far from Timiskaming, but it's in Ontario. So um, I started reading this last night. I'm five chapters in. I'm really enjoying it so far. And I thought this was kind of cute. The bookmark is a little note card that I was given years ago. But I just really love the painting. It's a Monet painting called Japanese Bridge. I think it's Le Pont Japonais. But uh, I love this painting and I always wanted to keep this card to like put it in a little teeny frame and stick it on my bathroom wall. So that's my bookmark right now. Uh, I am really enjoying it. I I figured that if I wanted to pick a random book off the shelf and I didn't want to put it down halfway through and forget about it, I should pick a short book. <laughs> so this one's only... It's less than 200 pages and I'm 60 pages in. So we're doing all right. And uh, yeah, so that's about all I have to talk to you guys about this week. And uh, so I will sign off and I will ask you all to please, especially now, please be kind to one another. There are people among us who could probably use a bit of kindness. The holidays are tough on people. Um, things that are happening in current events are tough on people, especially people from the Middle East, uh, people who are of the Muslim faith, maybe having a little bit of difficulty right now. Check on your friends. Check on your local Muslim community. Make sure everybody's okay. Um, be extra nice to those people. They really need it right now. Um, anyway. So I'm going to sign off and I hope you all have a fabulous week. Every time I pick up my knitting, I think of what my friend Jen said at the end of each one of her podcast episodes. I keep hoping that she's going to come back to it. Um, but Jen, the uncreative crafter, would always say it gets done one stitch at a time. And I think of that every time I pick up my knitting. Every stitch is important. Every act of kindness is important. So please be kind to one another. Have a great week. <laughs>